Your mental health is a priority. Nine Peaches Therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind, your body, and your soul. These self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert practitioner, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations infused with highly suggestible hypnosis to rid yourself of anxiety, fear, stress, and negative thinking. These guided meditations can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your everyday life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Ren podcast. I'm Shah, your host. Thanks so much for joining me today. So today I'm going to be addressing a topic that's very dear to my heart, and that is stopping smoking using the wonderful method of hypnosis. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy around hypnosis. There's lots of queries. I think people are very aware, though, now that hypnosis does work. And if you've had hypnosis before, you you will know that there's a difference, you know, hypnosis, stage hypnosis, and then hypnotherapy, which is hypnosis and therapy. So not all hypnotherapists are therapists or, or psychotherapists, shall we say. A lot of them are just trained in hypnosis. Some of them may have counseling diplomas, but most of them are hypnotherapists, exactly what it says on the tin. So always ask if you're looking for a trained psychotherapist. Hypnosis is excellent to stop smoking. I have helped so many people throughout the years and I wondered about uh, people nowadays, you see a lot of adverts for uh, different methods, you know, um, from abstinence to uh, the NHS, you know, uh, smoking cessation, lots of different things and things can work. I suppose everybody's different, but I find that hypnosis is not only a very quick way to stop, but I want to use the word easy, but you'll probably pull me up on it because smoking, the habit of smoking, I suppose, isn't easy. It's probably easy to smoke, not as easy to stop. So I want to address this podcast today, giving you 10 reasons why you should use hypnosis to stop smoking. And it will, you know, I've put a bit of science in there. So I've got some research papers in there as well, as I do. But I, I would like you to approach this, please, even as if you know a lot of this, as um, the facts. I'm just going to give it factually, and the way I present it may be quite factual as well, uh, but it's for a reason. It's because October is called Stoptober, and it's really the month to stop smoking. I know in March there's a Stop Smoking Day. There's a day for everything, but there, but Stoptober, for whatever reason, is to stop smoking. A lot of people are on that journey at the moment, and you know, it it, it smoking is one of those habits that you know either you're really bothered by it, depending on the part of the world you live in. I know in California, people hate the idea of smoking. And even in certain areas of different countries, I know in Switzerland as well, there's, you know, the thing about smoke, it's just depends on where you live. And uh, it's just another habit. It's another habit that people have habits. We'll talk about habits as well. I give you a little bit of uh, science behind habits too. So let's get started. 10 reasons why you should use hypnosis to stop smoking. 
I also wanted to add that、um, you'll notice at the beginning of the podcast today I have an ad for my therapeutic practice, and it's mostly for the CDs and MP3s that I've had available now for years.、Uh, I do get some good feedback on them. I would say, though, you'll notice there isn't one for stopping smoking, and that's because I do a one session to stop smoking.、Uh, you, you know, it's a ninety-minute session. Well, two hours really. It, it depends, but、uh, that's it. So there's no point in doing a recording to stop smoking. I do one session, but we'll talk about that. But I wanted to mention that because you may be thinking, "Well, I'm talking about stopping smoking, but you don't see any. You see things for sleep and relaxation, and you know negativity, letting go of anxiety and stress, but nothing about smoking." And that's because I do one session with it. But we'll we'll go into that. So without further ado, for real this time. Ten reasons why you should use hypnotherapy to stop smoking. You're listening to the Inquisitive Ren podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. In past decades, smoking was seen as cool and desirable. TV commercials and films glorified smoking. As time and science progressed, it became clearer that there were actually no benefits to smoking, only burdens such as life-threatening illness and disease. As people became more health conscious, they decided to stop the habit. But some found it a challenge. People continue to seek out and try different methods to stop smoking, which include nicotine patches, tobacco lozenges, and of course, alternative therapies such as acupuncture and hypnotherapy. People seek out and try different methods to stop smoking, which include nicotine patches, tobacco lozenges, and of course, alternative therapies such as acupuncture and hypnotherapy. In a study by G. Elkins and M. H. Rajab, twenty-one patients received hypnosis for smoking cessation. They obtained follow-up data on all of the participants for a minimum of one year. Most participants, ninety-five percent, were satisfied with the hypnotic treatment they received. Results indicated that of the patients who attended two sessions, sixty-seven percent had stopped smoking at the end of treatment. Forty-four percent at three months had obtained abstinence, and at nine and twelve months, thirty percent reported abstinence. Among the patients who attended all three sessions, ninety-two percent reported having stopped smoking at the end of treatment. In another study by J. Barnes et al., they considered randomized control trials that recruited people who smoked. And implemented hypnotherapy intervention for smoking cessation, compared with no treatment or with any other therapeutic interventions. There were one thousand nine hundred twenty-six participants for up to six months to July two thousand eighteen. The results show that there is insufficient evidence to determine whether hypnotherapy is more effective for smoking cessation than other forms of behavioral support. Or unassisted quitting. When you stop smoking, you may find yourself tired, restless, irritable, and unable to focus. Your mind and body will be adjusting to a new condition. This would happen if you stop taking any substance, for instance, sugar, alcohol, or coffee, for example. Today, I'm focusing on the use of hypnotherapy to stop smoking. As it has been found to be one of the most effective non-medical ways to stop, to quit the habit. So today, I offer you ten reasons why you should use hypnotherapy to stop smoking. One, it's no hassle. It takes little effort on your part, simply because your hypnotherapist should be trained in the language of hypnosis. A clever and well-studied mixture of the right words, 
the right placed metaphors, and some other tricks only known to the practitioner using their own style. The practitioner does 85% of the work, in my opinion. Through a consultation, they should gather all the information about you and your habit to incorporate this into the hypnosis. You just need to turn up on time, sit back, and relax. There are so many benefits to doing hypnotherapy in this way, which really presents to you no hassle. Now, you may think, well, it is a hassle. You have to find the right person, the right hypnotherapist. You have to make the time, and it costs money. So if you're looking at it that way, of course, that could seem like a hassle to you. To others, the amount of money you spend on cigarettes will far outweigh the amount of money you spend for a session of hypnotherapy. But also, surely you spend time every week doing monotonous things, doing mindless things that suck up and take up all of your time. Why not book a session of hypnotherapy to help you stop smoking, something that will change your life? So in many ways, I believe this is no hassle. You don't have to go and buy anything in particular. All you have to do is speak to a hypnotherapist that you can find on a hypnotherapy register or through your GP, if you like. Or you can just search the internet, see what you're drawn to. There's so many ways to find hypnotherapists. I suggest that you go to a hypnotherapy register because that will have a list of hypnotherapists in your area and also what their specialities are. If you find that somebody's a hypnotherapist but they do not highlight that they help you to stop smoking, pay attention to that. That will mean that they don't specialize in stopping smoking and they may not even believe in it. They may not even believe that hypnotherapy can help you to stop smoking. That will be based on their own experience, or their own practical experience, or their own private practice experience. Look for those who have the ability, the qualifications to help you to stop smoking. They should be clear about that listing and go to their website to see what they say about stopping smoking. In the end, use your intuition, rely on that, and after you speak to the hypnotherapist, because everyone should offer you a phone consultation at least, a free phone consultation at least, then you will get an idea of if this is the right person for you. If you're still unsure, ask for a Zoom session, ask for a face-to-face, -face, FaceTime, ask for a session where you can see the person. And if you still feel it's not right for you, turn it down. The hypnotherapist may do the same, so be prepared for that. I have certainly turned people away because I felt that they weren't right for hypnotherapy or that they weren't ready. I'm only interested in helping those who really want to stop, stop. And there's a lot that I can gain through a 15-minute, 20-minute phone call or quick Zoom session or FaceTime. It will save the hypnotherapist lots of time, but it will also save you time in the end. Number two, no nicotine withdrawal symptoms. Hooray! There are various studies that show that nicotine remains in the body for at least three days. Some studies show that this can be detected in the hair, urine, blood, and saliva for at least three days after you intake nicotine. In the case of smoking, because it is such a behavioral habit as it is a physical one, the action of putting your hand to mouth for the sole purpose of smoking should be tapered or stopped completely. This will help to break down the consistency of the habit. I believe that this is the mental habit that may show up as challenging for most people, not necessarily the nicotine withdrawal. Also, nicotine leaving the body can depend on each person's bodily physical makeup. It depends on weight, it can depend on many things. Remember that cigarettes don't just contain nicotine, they also contain toxic chemicals such as tar, carbon monoxide, a poisonous gas, arsenic, ammonia, acetane, the stuff that you remove nail polish with, and methylamine, which is used as an insecticide and to remove paint. 
So your body will get used to ingesting all of these chemicals, not just the nicotine, but it is the nicotine that causes the release of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter made in your brain. And it's also the reward center. This is where your brain is tricked into thinking it needs that hit. It needs that cigarette. It's the reward center. Withdrawal from nicotine. If you withdraw the nicotine and your brain will seek other ways to fulfill that void, which is where hypnotherapy comes in. Your therapist can help you find better ways to cope without nicotine. After all, you didn't always have the need for nicotine or cigarettes. Three, learn the art of relaxation. Hypnotherapy is one of the most relaxing and enjoyable therapies available. There is the myth that you must close your eyes, but many people keep their eyes open during hypnosis. We go in and out of trance all day. If you find yourself staring into space, and all of a sudden five minutes have gone by, you were in a trance state. It's just harder to do so due to the intense relaxation your body experiences. So if your eyes are open during hypnotherapy, your body will want to relax, which will include closing your eyes. This gives the body the impression that it's time to go to sleep. Hypnos is the Greek word for sleep. During your session, you'll be given the tools to do it yourself and learn to take yourself into a very deep state of relaxation. It is so enjoyable that you won't want to return to your normal waking state. The good news is that you'll have learned how to do it yourself and use it to your benefit. This is the way most people start a meditation practice. Once they experience hypnosis the right way, there is no turning back. Relaxation's benefits include lower blood pressure, clearer thinking, reducing of heart rate, reduction in stress-related illnesses, reduction in acting on impulses, and a reduction in behavioral outbursts, and increased quality of sleep, just to name a few benefits. Learning the art of relaxation can change your life. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Number four, start developing new habits. The therapy part of hypnotherapy addresses how you will replace the old habit. The you that smoked will feel distant and therefore you'll need to remain integrated But without that part of you, it needs to be replaced. This is what is missing most of the time for many who either see hypnotherapists who aren't trained properly or at at all, and those who are very skilled. Even then, there is a certain way to incorporate this into the actual session. In Charles Duhigg's book, The Power of Habit, he talks about the habit loop whereby through doses of repetition, that some events or emotions trigger a cue for a routine. The habit emerges once a cue emerges, which then starts a craving and a habit develops. New habits are created by putting together a cue, a routine, a reward, and then cultivating that craving into a loop. As a smoker, The cue for you will be whatever it is that cultivates that loop. For instance, stress, anger, loneliness, or sadness. It is usually an unacknowledged emotion. Even if it's acknowledged, you may not know what to do with it. So you may think, oh, that's it. I'm stressed and that's why I smoke. It's good that you've identified it, but now you need to replace it or else you'll continue in that loop. You need to replace the cue with a good one, one that is healthier and doesn't sabotage your freedom the way smoking does. Number five, hypnotherapy helps you to reduce stress. The reason stopping smoking reduces stress is because you are no longer feeding into the addiction, which is mental as well as physiological. 
here's the rub. You think that smoking is reducing your stress when it is actually adding to your stress. It puts stress on your body, your lungs, your nervous system, your heart and your well-being. Not to mention how you smell and look. Smokers have a look, especially as they age. And that look is more apparent around the mouth, the eyes and the voice. Mentally, you already know you're adding to the risk percentage of you developing a life-threatening disease such as cancer, heart disease, stroke, lung diseases, diabetes, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which includes emphysema, and chronic bronchitis. All of these are not curable, and you can only manage the symptoms. In addition to this, smoking can increase risk of tuberculosis, certain eye diseases, and can create problems with your immune system, including rheumatoid arthritis. You already know that this will be causing you stress. Even if it's in the back of your mind, it's there. Yet you continue the habit, which is taking years off of your life. Once you stop smoking, the worry about developing these life-changing diseases can cease. The other benefits in the way it reduces stress is that your pulse rate returns to normal, your circulation begins to improve, and your energy begins to increase. So you may find that you become a lot more active if you choose to do so. Number six, hypnotherapy used to stop smoking can help you to lose weight. There are very few studies that show hypnotherapy can be used on its own to control your weight. I do not include weight loss into my private practice using hypnotherapy because through my own experience practice, I believe psychotherapy is a more effective method. That is my own private practice and my own choice. However, Learning to relax can be an aid and complementary therapy to psychotherapy because, of course, once you learn to reduce stress and to relax, you can control your impulses, the impulse to eat or overeat. Here I am referring to stopping smoking. Many smokers believe that smoking helps to control their weight and they're fearful that they will gain weight if they stop smoking. This has some truth in it, but only because whatever the issues are around eating or the possibility of overeating have been replaced with smoking. Both involve ingesting and a hand-to-mouth action. This is why it is easier to start eating when you stop smoking because it soothes the habit. It cultivates the habit of hand-to-mouth. That would be the cue. A good hypnotherapist will know to address this issue. This is important to address because again, this needs to be replaced with something else. Eradicating the hand to mouth may appear to be the easy solution, but often is not. A therapist should look at this in depth in preparation for the session and should be addressed within the session itself. You don't have to gain weight. You don't want to start replacing bad habits with more bad ones. Once addressed properly within the hypnotherapy session, you may find that you actually lose weight instead of gaining it. Number seven, hypnotherapy to stop smoking can improve your sleeping. For reasons that may appear obvious, if you smoke heavily, you will rise in the night to smoke. If you don't smoke at night or within the home or only in the garden, smokers can have habits and quirks about their habit. Then your habit will be affecting your physical health and adding to stress on your body. When all those chemicals go to work on you, they don't calm you down. They do the opposite. Your body will be fighting to not become ill from the poisons. Some manage this and unfortunately some don't, hence serious illness. Hypnotherapy addresses this issue within the session and it also helps you to learn sleeping and relaxation techniques
to employ at bedtime. In fact, you may find that as your body begins to heal from the force of those poisonous fumes, that you are more tired for a few days. This is your body healing. So be kind to yourself and rest often. People have reported to me that they are sleeping more now that they've stopped smoking. And this is because they weren't really getting quality sleep before. And it's and they've been sleep deprived, so it's a catch up for them. Hypnotherapy within that stop smoking session will automatically help you to improve sleep. But the hypnotherapist can also incorporate this within the session for your benefit. Number eight, stop for good. Hypnotherapy to stop smoking can help you to stop for good. There are no patches where nicotine is being absorbed into your system. What's the point of that other than to give you the illusion that you must be weaned off cigarettes, which is just not the case. Yes, your body will be used to its dose of nicotine, but remember there is so much more going on other than physical symptoms. Your mind is ruling your body. And this brings us to the mind-body debate in psychology about whether mental phenomena are a subset of physical phenomena. For me, the quandary is meat. Physicians speak about concepts such as willpower and mindfulness has been incorporated into evidence-based practices such as dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT. And so my belief is that many of these debates are just to keep a conversation going. Either they believe the mind and body influence each other or Spiritual beliefs support the idea that mind, body, and soul have a connection. Psyche means the soul. So an entire medical profession of psychology and psychiatry is built upon the psyche, the soul. And so this debate is mind-boggling. And my opinion is that it's political as well. The important thing is to find what works for you, regardless of its origins, its backgrounds, or beliefs. The evidence should be what happens for you, the end result. That is evidence enough. Abstinence works for most addicts. If you did not start out smoking one or two a week, then it's unlikely you would be able to continue that way. You're still a smoker, even if you have one a week, one a month, one a year. That is smoking. You could label it as casual smoking, but you still smoke. After all, Alcoholics Anonymous, that cure, which has become regarded as the most effective support for sobriety, bypasses science and medicine completely. They focus on the habits. I performed a clinical audit of my practice a few years ago, and some of the feedback about smoking showed that one session was enough. I did have one person say that the only issue they had was that they wished they'd had more sessions because they fully enjoyed the hypnosis. They had stopped smoking, which is what I was looking for, but wanted to continue with the relaxation training, which we were able to do. And this has been an ongoing theme throughout. A smoker thinks they're relaxing when they smoke, but actually their body is firing on all cylinders in terms of pulse rate nerve endings, lung capacity restrictions, blood circulation and oxygen level restrictions. The body is trying to literally take in this foreign body, this nicotine that you are inhaling into your system that is not designed to accept it. No matter how long you've been inhaling those fumes, your body is still adjusting to them. Number nine, Willpower is not required with hypnotherapy. Contrary to popular belief, delaying perceived gratification may seem like a big ask to an addict. And therefore, their impulses kick in, and before you know it, they've lit up a cigarette. Impulses are learned. I believe all behavior is learned. A smoker will link what is perceived as gratification, smoking, to the urge to do so. They are separate though they work hand in hand. For example, you may have an urge to shout at someone, 
but you're able to keep your calm and hold your tongue. There'll be reasons for that. But if you're impulsive, then you won't be able to do so. Before you know it, you shout it. This is a lack of impulse control. In terms of smoking, you may have the urge to smoke. If you've learned impulse control and it's natural to you, then you have a space, a tiny space, where you can think. And even if you don't think, you can delay. You can delay long enough to reason. The best example of this is when smokers tell me about times they were so busy with a project that they forgot to smoke that day. How does that happen? Especially if it's true what scientists would have you believe, and that is that nicotine is stronger than heroin. That's a myth that seems to continue. It's simply not true. What may be true is that addiction, no matter the source, includes a lack of impulse control, which is extremely powerful. With hypnotherapy, you don't need willpower. Willpower alone gives the impression that you're conjuring up something that you may not have. That defeats the purpose before you've even begun. Use the term willpower and you'll find resistance in most people. It sets you up to fail. It also sets you up to believe or to think or to have evidence that you're no good. You'll never be any good at it. You might as well carry on smoking. We want to eliminate those and, ifs, or buts. And willpower is all about and, if, and but. Willpower is not required with hypnotherapy to stop smoking. And number 10, hypnotherapy can be applied in one session only. There are mixed views about this, and it will very much depend on the therapist's practice. In very rare occasions could I justify more than one session to stop smoking. If the person needs more than one session, then it isn't to quit smoking. It will be to address something that has come to the surface through abstinence and stopping the habit. That can be addressed using hypnotherapy, but it won't be a stop smoking session. The work needed will be done in that one session. I believe either you're going to stop or you're not. And whenever you stop, it should be for good. In a study by M. Chaitan et al., data from 1,277 participants who had made an attempt to quit smoking in the Ontario Tobacco Survey, which was a longitudinal survey of smokers that were followed every six months for up to three years beginning in 2005, resulted in an estimated average of quit attempts expected before quitting successfully ranged from 6.1% to 19.6% using a constant rate approach. And that went on to 29.6%. So overall, it showed that it could take some people up to 30 attempts, 29.6, to stop before they actually stop. And this does not include any particular method used. This does not include hypnotherapy. This is just an overall survey. These appear to be very dire results for people wanting to stop smoking just as a whole. However, more research needs to be done to specially address those who use hypnotherapy. As I stated before, I completed a clinical audit of my private practice for feedback on many of the conditions I treat, including phobia, stress, and stopping smoking. And I received 98% quit rate after nine years. This is just by those I was able to reach. I do run into people in the supermarket or elsewhere who say that they came to see me and that they have been successful. So the audit wasn't fully inclusive, but included enough. It was some data. My suggestion is that more hypnotherapists do clinical audits on their private practices. And with stopping smoking, it's important to leave some time in between. You can arrange the, the clinical audit in the way that suits you best. You can look up how to do it. I just did it myself. I knew what I wanted to gain. And I was able to gain it. And there is a lot to be said about feedback. 
I believe the 2% who went back to smoking and then stopped again, because that's what they said, that they were stopping and starting again. One person had lost a relative, a, a, a parent, another client had a divorce. And so that, you know, life changes can affect how successful somebody is, especially when they try and drop a habit. Still, 98% is a huge success, and I'm pleased with that. But that was using a stop smoking in one session method. Early on in my early practice of hypnotherapy, I would do two or three sessions of stopping smoking, and it didn't take long for me to figure out people don't need more than that. I'm not quite sure why people are offering lots of sessions to stop smoking. I believe you only need the one. So why not use hypnotherapy to stop smoking? I know people are vaping more, but it's the same thing. You're not stopping. If you don't have a vape one day, you'll go to a cigarette. Remember, it's the actual habit itself. Whatever it is, whatever that dopamine supply is providing for you, whatever purpose it's fulfilling, You've got to dig deep and look at why you've started it. I like to give this example because they gave me permission to use it. But early in my practice, I saw twins and they came at the same time. They wanted to stop smoking. After doing the preliminary consultation, I learned that one thing that their parents, one of their parents had said to them was, that they had started smoking at a very early age and that they, the twins, were likely to start as well. So what happened? They started smoking at a young age. It was almost like a hypnotherapy suggestion that their parent gave them. Now, people aren't often cognizant of the effect that things may have on their children or other people for that matter. But it was something like that that started them on the habit. So I give that example to say there will be a reason why, there will be a reason why you started this habit, this particular habit of all habits. And it could be that you're ready to stop now because it's not helping you. Whatever you decide, even if you decide to get help from the NHS, give your health a fair chance to be as good as it can be, to provide for you a very easy and a very enjoyable life. And that won't include smoking. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so you don't miss an episode. And join me. I have a podcast twice a month. See you back soon. Thanks so much for listening today. Make sure you subscribe and follow on all streaming platforms. Leave me a comment and also let me know if there's any particular topics you'd like me to discuss. See you next time.